For the past couple of weeks, months, days, or whatever it is, OpenAI is one of the most talked about AI companies. In November of 2022, OpenAI released a chatbot that you may all be familiar with called ChatGPT, which immediately proceeded to blow up. It took only five days to reach 1 million users. In comparison, Instagram took 2.5 months to reach that level. ChatGPT was shared like crazy on social media and literally everyone claimed it to be the biggest thing since bread was sliced. It helped people solve math problems, write essays, write basic code, solve world hunger. But I wanted to know how can we use it in the magic industry? If I were to come out with a book on card tricks, could I just use it to write a book for me? Let's find out what it can do. What up crew, hope you're doing well. I'm really excited to be creating and sharing this video with you. I have a background in computer engineering, so I wanted to see how I can fuse these concepts with card magic. And then OpenAI came out with ChatGPT and I'm like, you know what? Let's try this out. Fingers crossed that this is gonna be awesome. So before we get started, make sure to smash the like button, hit subscribe, grab your favorite deck of playing cards if you have one. And now, let's do it. Here's what came out. It says, sure, here's a simple card trick to perform. Ask someone to pick a card from the deck and remember it, pretty classic. Have them return the card to the deck and shuffle it. I guess that's normal as well, if you know what the card is most of the time. Spread the deck face down and ask them to point to their card without telling you what it is. What? How are they gonna point to their card if the deck is face down? You know, this card trick is 10 steps. We're stuck on step three, but you know what? Let's let's put this into practice. Let's try this out. All right, so first step first, they want someone to pick a card from the deck and remember it. So we'll do that. Pick a card from the deck and remember it. We have the eight of spades. Then have them return the card to the deck and shuffle it. Okay, I have no idea how we're gonna find the card, but we'll do that anyway. Next is to spread the deck face down and ask them to point to their card without telling you what it is. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna spread the deck face down, like they said. How would you point to your card? How are you gonna to point to the eight of spades? How? You know what? Let's just say, for example, the spectator knows what their card is, right? The spectator knows for some reason by the back what their card is. So uh, our eight of spades, where's our eight of spades? We spread out this deck and let's just say the spectator knows what the eight of spades is. Let's say it's right over here. The cards are now face down. The eight of spades is right over there. Remember it, right? Right there. The next step says uh, point to their card without telling you what it is. So they're pointing to it. We, again, we're for some reason not seeing any of this. Look at the two cards on either side. Okay. Okay. We. Uh, um, all right. So they're pointing to their card, right? The spectator is pointing to their card. We look at the cards on either side. And now the next step says to remember them. How do we know what these cards are? What is this trick? You know what, let's, let's even try this with the, with the deck face up because there's no way to do this with the cards face down. Right, so let's just say we spread out the playing cards. Uh, where's our Ace of Spades? Ace of Spades is right there, right? So let's just say they point to the card, but they hide exactly what the card is. So we don't, we don't see what the card is, right? Hopefully you can see that on screen. They're hiding what the card is. Now we look at the cards on either side. We see nine of diamonds and four of clubs. <laughs> this, this is a joke. This has to be a joke. All right, but we're remembering the nine of diamonds and four of clubs. What's the next step? Have them place the selected card back in the deck and shuffle it again. Okay. Should we take it out and put it back in the deck? I don't freak, I, let's just keep it where it is and then shuffle the deck. All right, so shuffle it up again and now spread the deck and ask them to point to their card again. Can we see it this time? I don't know. Eight of spades. I guess technically it's, I didn't shuffle it well enough, so it's still between the cards. But uh, let's just say it, it worked out and it worked out this way. When they do, spread the deck and reveal the two cards you mentioned or you remember, remembered earlier. Nine of diamonds and four of clubs. I've mentioned it to you. Hopefully that means something. Tell them that one of these two cards is their selected card, but you need their help to figure out which one. All right, yo, here's, here's, here's the rub. One of these two cards is your card. This one or this one, but I need your help to find out what it is. Okay, the next step says have them pick one of the two cards and ask them if it's your selected card. Okay, let's just say you pick this one. I'm gonna ask you, is that your selected card? What are you gonna say? You're gonna say no, that's not your card. 
And regardless of their answer, tell them that you were actually referring to the other card, which was their selected card all along. <laughs> what? Okay, okay. Pick a card. This one? Is that your selected card? No? Well, I was referring to this one. Gotcha. It says this trick relies on the psychology of misdirection and suggestion. Have fun with it. I mean, I guess I had fun, but like what? What is this? What is this trick? Okay, so going into this, I didn't fully expect it to work, but I thought even if he gave me like a little bit of something, I'd be able to, you know, do something with it, but... Let's try this out again with a different input to see if it outputs something a bit more useful. Okay, again, this says start by shuffling the decks, ask them to pick a card, put it back in the deck. Hold the deck in your hand, ask the person to tell you the name of their card, put the deck face down and ask the person to point to their card. How do they, how are, how are you pointing to your card if the deck is face down? I don't understand that concept. And then somehow you're gonna look at the bottom card while the deck is spread face down and then you're gonna cut the deck so the bottom card on top of the deck and spread it face down again. The person's gonna point to their card again. And as the person's pointing, you're gonna look at the bottom card again and this time the bottom card will be their selected card. How does this make any sense? Ugh, computers are not geniuses. Maybe you can teach me like the, the three card Monty. Okay, this seems a bit more reasonable so far. Okay, so what I like about the trick so far is the spectator doesn't pick a card and they're not put face down just for the spectator to select the card that they picked. This is actually, a, you know, a three card Monty, which I'm sure you've seen many, many scam videos about those. Okay, but now here's what they're saying to do. Uh, grab three cards, ace, king, and queen of the same suit. All right, let's do that. All right, that part's done, nice and easy. Ace, king, and queen of the same suit. Uh, next thing is the goal is to get the spectator to pick the wrong card. Start by shuffling the, three, uh, the cards and place them face down on the table. You know what, I, I lied. The spectator has to choose one of the three cards, but we can't let them see it. Okay. Pick up the two remaining cards and shuffle them. Let's say they pick this card. You can't see it, by the way, but you pick that card. And now these cards are shuffled around rapidly to keep the chosen card at the bottom of the two cards in your hand. I mean, I guess technically it's on the bottom, right? It says pick up the two remaining and shuffle them around rapidly, making sure to keep the chosen card at the bottom of the two cards in your hand. So should I be picking this up? I'm very lost. Okay, well it says to place the two cards back on the table, keeping their chosen card on the bottom. There we go. I think that's right. Ask the spectator to point to what card they chose. Which card did you choose? Oh, was it this one? Ah, that's incorrect. Let's do that again. Where is your card? This one? No, that's wrong. Now it says finally on the last try, let the spectator Choose the correct card and reveal it to them. They will be amazed. Okay, I'm gonna do the rapid shuffling. I'm gonna let you choose the right card. Where is your card? Right here? You're right, this is your card. The King of Spades. Oh wait, you don't even know that because you never freaking saw the card. Sorry about that, I got a little too excited there. You know, card tricks really excite me, especially when done wrong. I don't know man, I'm not sure what to do. I don't think ChatGPT can come up with a card trick, but let's keep trying. Okay, already spread the deck face down, ask the person to point to their card. Next. I'm pretty sure this guy's gonna be like, no, I can't chat with you anymore. No GPT. Start by shuffling the deck, ask someone to pick a card, ask the person to remember the card, hold the deck in your hand, tell them to name your card, spread the deck face, face down, and ask the person to point to their card. No. I honestly think they just have one card trick where you just, they have to point to the card and that's it. I think that's it. That's the only card trick you can come up with. It knows nothing else. Okay, the four of a kind trick. Okay, this sounds like it could be heading in the right direction. The second I see, spread the deck face down and have the spectator point to the card. It's, it's over, it's over for me. You can't do that. Okay, let's even say we got to the point where the cards are spread out 
and the spectator points to their card, it's the Ace of Spades, right? And now the thing says to take a look at the card right above it or in front of it, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, at the card directly above it, which is the Four of Spades. Now you cut that to the top. If you cut that to the top, that means the second card from the top is a spectator selected card, right? And uh, now it says spread the deck face up and show the person the four cards on top of the deck all have the same suit, which they don't. Look, what is, how did they just happen? And then it goes even further, okay? It says, ask the person to name their card, which we obviously know is Ace of Spades, and then reveal the four cards to be four of a kind in the same suit as their chosen card. How? How do we do this? And final note, by the way, it says the trick relies on memorizing the position of the chosen card in the deck, so make sure to practice this step before performing the trick. I mean, and so our search continues. So I've been at this for quite some time now. I'm really starting to lose all hope. All faith is lost. So I had an idea. I asked ChatGPT Die Vernon's best card trick, and it gave me some information on Die Vernon saying he was uh, the professor, legendary magician known for his skills with card magic. And it has one of his most famous tricks was the ambitious card. Now, this is a routine where the card kind of rises to the top once you push it somewhere in the center. But I'm curious to see, can ChatGPT give me a tutorial on the ambitious card routine? It's taking a while. And I got a network error. Okay, let's try regenerating the response. You know what, I've been at this for three hours. Let's just try it. Take a deck of cards and ask someone to choose a card. Make sure they remember the card and replace it back into the deck. Hold the deck in your left hand with your thumb on top of the deck and your fingers curled underneath. Say, I'm going to make your card rise to the top of the deck. Push the selected card up just enough so that it sticks out the top of the deck. Push the card back down into the deck with your right thumb. Repeat steps four and five a few more times. Each time the selected card rises to the top of the deck and then falls back into the deck. Finally, push the selected card all the way up to the top and show it to the spectator as if by magic. That's it, yo. I seriously think that's the best that we're gonna get. So I've definitely learned a lot today when it comes to the limitations of AI. It cannot do magic. So my magical and non-magical friends, your biggest takeaway from this video should be that if you wanna learn magic, you subscribe to The Card Mechanic. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out, I will see you soon.